So what did we learn so far? We learned how to create classes and IDs into a style sheet. We learned how to keep stylesheet.css or these types of CSS files into a separate folder under the same root project that we have created. And then we have learned how to link this particular stylesheet.css with our main HTML page. And this is the result of it. We can now see over here that everything that we have created so far into our project we have used a universal selector we have used a general tag and we have created an html selector here which has a background of black and the same thing is being observed over here so now we can proceed a bit more we can create something else that is more productive such as if we get back to index.html in this particular case, we can use a class against our div, such as we can create a class which is known as mother wrapper. That we have created a mother wrapper selector here. We are using this particular class against a particular div into our index.html. Now all we need to do, we need to create the same selector name into our stylesheet.css in order to make this thing work. If we get back to our project and reload, so far we can see that no such distinguishable thing such as this mother wrapper that we have created over here. But now if we get back to stylesheet.css and if we declare a class with this dot and we choose this selector name to be a mother wrapper, now we are presenting this curly brackets over here and if we say that the width of this mother wrapper should be a thousand peaks the height to 300 peaks with a background color of red and with a margin condition we will be discussing about this margin later but first of all let's assume that this is the syntax that will make this proper div right into the middle of your page and that is the exact intention that produced this thing this syntax over here now all we need to do we need to get back to our project and reload and we can see that there's a mother wrapper div is been created into your page another thing if we just remove this particular margin zero auto condition from here and get back to our project and reload now we can see that the entire div is now shifted towards the left. That means margin zero auto condition is the only condition that is practically aligning your div right into the central position of your page. And that is the original intention. So for the time being, we will assume that this is the actual syntax which is used in order to create a particular div inside your HTML page. Now let's get back to our project and reload. And another thing, this particular syntax is supposed to create a zero peaks margin from the top of this page. That means from the top part of this browser, it should be having a zero peaks margin. And this particular red box should be lying at the top of the page. But it is now maintaining a constant margin of somewhat value from the top. In the previous case, we had created these things here these two tags that we were using. So first of all, let's remove from this index.html. We do not have a need of it. We know how to use header tags. So all we are now doing now, reloading, and we can see that it is now acting as par in accordance to the syntax that we have provided. Now, this is the thing that we can see from here that a div with a mother wrapper class is been created and all we know that div is a block element but to rather know it better let's create two separate divs here inside this first mother wrapper div that we have created for say we are creating another div with a test box one we will now understand the block level property of a div element and what to do to overcome this block level property and align them into a horizontal display so that is why we are creating these two individual divs over here this is the test box one 
and on the other hand we are creating another div with a class name of text box 2 so here are two divs those have been created over here and we will be needing those class names those we have created so we are copying it so we are getting back to stylesheet.css and here we are declaring a class here with this dot if we had to declare it as an id then all we need to do we need to provide here a hashtag but this is a class so that is why we are declaring it as a class and with a dot over here pasting this selector name and we are providing this with with of this particular test box 1 to 100 pixels and we are providing this background color the height of this particular box should be for say 50 pixels we don't need to provide any kind of margin or padding over here because this is a child element and if we want to provide any kind of margin and padding that is a separate issue if you have that requirement to provide a margin then you provide it if you do not need to provide any kind of margin over here then do not provide it but into the main parent div you need to provide such thing here a margin or a padding in case if it is needed now on the other hand all we are doing we are creating another class name here with the same properties and this class name is named as test box 2 as we have created over here in the second case the class name should be test box 2 and that is what we have created over here both of them are having same properties except this particular background color property so we are providing here a blue color now let's get back to our project and reload and we can see that two distinct boxes is been produced inside this thousand peaks mother wrapper div and those two divs are practically vertically stacked one over another so this is the thing in this particular case and this is the magic of a block level element every time whenever we create some div over here all of those divs those are supposed to align in the exact vertical display every elements will be vertically stacked one over another but now let's see anomaly whenever we are applying a span class here instead of a deep class for say we are now providing here a span class change these things into span and again we have created this second child element over here and we are turning this deep element into a span what should be the output according to theory those two classes those should be horizontally placed they, and they should execute a horizontal display this is the thing that is supposed to be done over here but if we now get back to our project and reload we can see that both of these boxes are now gone so what happens now in an order to demonstrate it in the first case all we are now going to do we are going to insert some contents over here such as hello cruel word and here we are placing as in the second child element so all we are now doing here we have placed two contents two particular lines this hello cruel word and how are you these days both of them are now being placed over here so we are now getting back to our project and reloading and we can see that again those two boxes those are now appearing over here with the contents those have been created so what is the exact purpose it is serving right now practically in case of a span element it is a dimensionless element that means nothing like this property such as width or height or this kind of properties those exactly represent some dimension those won't be visible in case of a span element but you can see that both of these elements those are now in a horizontal display that means a span is now acting as it is supposed to do you may use here a padding property such as if we use here this kind of padding property for say padding 10 pigs and here too we are using this padding 10 pigs if we save and get back to our project and reload we can see that both of them are now executing a padding property if we now keep all those contents into a proper alignment both of them will be working fine in case of a span element this dimensions practically won't be working in case of a span element that we have created over here we can see that the dimensions were with a 
a width of 100 pixels or a height of 50 pixels, but yet they are not working into the main page that we have created, except the padding thing. On the other hand, if instead we use a div element here, change these properties into div again here, div, and if we get back to our project and reload, then we can see that all those elements all those boxes those are practically getting vertically one over another that means div is a block level element and a span is an inline element so that is what we need to know from this tutorial the difference between a block level element and a span level element so hope you guys have liked this tutorial if you guys have liked this tutorial then do not hesitate to hit that red subscribe button down below hope to see you guys in our next tutorial till then bye Thank you.